So you're looking for a step-by-step -step system to grow your YouTube channel fast. Using the exact same steps I'm about to show you, I've personally grown multiple YouTube channels from zero to tens of millions of views and over 100,000 subscribers. And to prove it wasn't luck, I recently taught this exact same process to a bunch of complete beginners and those who actually implemented it went from struggling to getting many tens of thousands of views minimum in just a few months. In fact, some of the most successful ones were able to quit their nine to five and go full time on YouTube in less than one year just following this process. And I know this all probably sounds way too good to be true, so let's just dive into this and I'll break down the whole process for you. Oh, and real quick, I know this is gonna be a long video, but I have to warn you, try and stick around for the whole thing. This isn't a hodgepodge of tips and tricks I just threw together. This is a holistic system. And so if you miss just one step, often the whole thing can then come crumbling down. So if you've watched any of my other videos, at some stage you've probably heard me bragging like a complete douche about how I've gained over 1 billion views across all the channels I've worked on. But what you might not know is that when I first started my channel, I was a complete failure. I tried over 15 different niches and styles of content, but after posting for an entire year, I only gained about 150 subscribers, which is, you know, kind of embarrassing. But then I started doing some of the things I'm going to talk about in this video, and I went from getting an average of 15 subscribers per month to over 1,000 subscribers per month in a space of a little over six weeks. And so if you only take one thing away from this video, I want it to be this. Hard work is important, but if something isn't working, don't do it harder. You need to start working smarter at that point. And that brings us to the first step. I think you should really focus on trying to get the technical basics of content creation down. Primarily, we're talking designing graphics and editing videos. And it's actually a lot easier than you'd think. When it comes to graphic design, there's an awesome program out there called a Photo P. It's basically a Photoshop ripoff that's completely free and you can make really killer thumbnails in it, which I'll talk more about later. There's another software out there called Audacity, which is great for editing and recording audio, also completely free. And when it comes to video editing, DaVinci Resolve is absolutely absolutely amazing. Again, it's completely free as well, but you can do pretty much everything you'd be able to do in a paid editing software in DaVinci. So not to get too bogged down in the details, but that's the first step in this process is getting your technical skills up to scratch because it's going to make everything else easier and faster for you. So take a course, or if you can't afford a course, watch free YouTube tutorials out there. But one thing I will say is probably don't try and learn these things on your own just through like trial and error. I tried that at the start. And if you don't know where to click and where the buttons are and where the settings are, it gets really confusing fast. Use other people's knowledge to accelerate your own learning and you'll get pretty good pretty fast. But getting good at grading thumbnails and videos isn't going to get you even close to where you want to be if you want to be a successful YouTuber without the next step. So let me explain it using a potentially oversimplified example. Now I want you to imagine that I, me, Marcus, create a new channel and post one Call of Duty video on it. And one viewer, Dave, ends up clicking on that video and watching it all the way to the end. Now, Dave is a 34-year-old squirrel walker from the UK. Now, why did I point out that Dave's a 34-year-old squirrel walker from the UK? Well, one of the main ways that YouTube figures out who to promote your videos to is by analyzing the types of people who've already watched and enjoyed your videos. Then it goes out there and it tries to find people who have similar attributes and habits to those people, and it promotes your videos to them. So because Dave, the 34-year-old male squirrel walker from the UK, clicked on and watched my Call of Duty video, YouTube's probably gonna go out there and find other 34 year old male squirrel walkers from the UK. And then it's gonna try and promote my videos to all of these quote, Dave lookalikes. Now, continuing on with my example, let's imagine that for whatever reason, there's something about my Call of Duty content that really clicks with this 34 year old male squirrel walker from the UK audience and it's a hit. So let's say I continue posting videos about Call of Duty. YouTube keeps promoting my videos to Dave and all the Dave lookalikes who continue clicking on and enjoying my videos and all is right with the world. But then something happens. I post a Minecraft video. Now remember YouTube has all this data on my audience and who it thinks enjoy my videos. So it's gonna go out there and it's gonna start promoting my Minecraft video to Dave and Dave lookalikes. But where a problem can occur is when Dave or the Dave lookalikes aren't interested in Minecraft videos. They're only interested in Call of Duty. So when YouTube promotes my Minecraft video to them, none of them click, or if they do click, they don't watch for very long. And this sends negative signals to the YouTube algorithm about my video. Basically, YouTube looks at my video and thinks, well, people aren't engaging with Marcus's new video like they did with all of his previous ones. So this is probably just a bad video and I'm gonna stop promoting it. Now think about this. If we take a 30,000 foot view of this situation, you and I both know that it's possible that my Minecraft video is actually not a bad video. 
Rather, it's a good video that's just been promoted to the wrong person. It's a Minecraft video that's been promoted to 34-year-old squirrel walkers from the UK who, it turns out, only want to watch Call of Duty content. And that's why people aren't clicking. But sometimes YouTube doesn't see it this way. It just promotes the video to people it thinks would like it. And then when they don't like it, it goes, oh, bad video and just kills the video's reach. <laughs> See the problem? And so many small YouTubers fall into this trap in a massive extent. In other words, they post video after video on a variety of different random topics or games. Every new video is for a kind of different type of audience. And in a nutshell, YouTube just gets confused about who to promote your video to. It doesn't get enough consistent data and so it stops promoting to anyone. And so to avoid this mistake, what you want to do instead is create videos that are all highly related to one another. So they all attract a similar kind of person and you gradually train the algorithm on who your audience is so it has the easiest time possible finding lookalikes and promoting your new videos to new people who would be interested in watching them. And that's why picking a niche is the next step in this system. Now, there are a bunch of different ways to think about a niche and how to pick one. But at the end of the day, what matters is that all of the people who watch your videos should be very interested in watching all of your other videos. Now, there are also a bunch of other benefits to picking a niche that I've discussed in other videos, but so that I don't bore you we can move on to the next step. The long story short is just pick a niche. And the reason I want to move on real quick is because even if you pick a niche, there's still a few more steps you need to do if you want it to actually work out for you. See, because in the upcoming steps, we're going to go over the ways that you can actually start generating more views and traffic for your videos. But before you do that, you want to make sure the people who actually end up on your channel have a good experience. So get rid of any content that is absolutely terrible and gives people a bad experience with your channel. Have a decent channel banner and profile picture. Make sure there's actually content on your channel homepage when they land on it. And I call this maximizing your subscribe rate. In other words, we're trying to increase the percentage of people who actually subscribe when they click to your channel and land on it. Now this isn't gonna have a huge world changing impact. So I don't have to spend like a massive amount of time on it. But even if this little optimization period only makes your channel 1% more subscribable, in my opinion, over the long run, it's going to be worth doing. And so that's why it's the next step in this process. But then once we've done that, we can get onto the good stuff, the things that actually start getting you more views and subscribers, because I struggled with this so much when I first started. It took me 12 months to get a little over 150 subscribers. And I used to think that I had an exposure problem. I thought that I was creating good videos. And I must be missing some sort of like setting or trick because for whatever reason, other people who seem to have similar videos to me were getting promotion from the algorithm and I just wasn't. Now, in reality, when I look back, I recognize recognize that my exposure problem was actually just a symptom of a bigger problem. The truth was my content actually wasn't as good as I thought it was and I was making some pretty big mistakes. And I eventually realized this but it took me a while because sometimes it's hard to break yourself out of your own little bubble if you're not getting any feedback. And when I say feedback, I'm talking about comments, of course, but also direct or the most direct form of feedback, which is your analytics. And a way you can guarantee that you get feedback on your channel, regardless of whether the algorithm likes you or not, is to promote it manually. And that's the next step in this process. Now, I want to make something clear. You will get views and subscribers through promotion, which is great, but that is not the goal of promotion. Your goal is not to promote your way to success. The goal here, at least in this process, is to get real feedback and data so you can test and learn much faster. So don't think about promotion as accelerating growth. Think about it as accelerating learning. So at this stage in the process, we've got content creation basics down. We've picked a niche, we've optimized our channel, and we're putting out videos. So if you start forcing a bunch of this targeted traffic using promotion to your channel and videos with some good manual promotion, you'll start picking up on what's working and what's not. You'll see what types of videos your audience resonate with the most. You'll get enough views that your analytics graphs actually become somewhat useful so you can see where people click off your videos. And as an added bonus, it'll also expose you to all the different nooks and crannies in your community. So in an indirect way, it's going to force you to keep your finger on the pulse of what people in your niche are actually talking about and help you develop an intuition for what the status quo is, which is going to be very important for one of the upcoming steps. Now, the most obvious place that people think about when you say promotion is social media and posting short form content like TikToks, Reels, and Shorts. But regardless of where you promote, the most important thing is that you don't be spammy and you promote to people who would actually care genuinely about your content. So with that in mind, you can go out there and start promoting your channel 
But even if you're promoting your videos properly and to the right people, you probably won't generate any traffic if you don't get really good at the next step in this process. So I want you to imagine two different videos. Video A is a video where you watch a creator start and play a new Minecraft world from scratch. There also exists a certain video B, a video where a creator invites 100 players to take part in a giant Minecraft build battle and whoever builds the coolest thing, that creator will buy it for them in real life. Now, which of these two videos would you be more likely to click on. I'm willing to bet it's B because compared to A, the concept of the video itself is just so much more interesting. After hearing it described, you have an expectation of what video B would actually be like to watch. And rightly so, you think it would be the far more entertaining of the two. So what does this example have to do with anything? Well, think about it. You have a pretty clear idea in your head as to which video you'd be more interested in watching even though you have no idea who the creator of these videos are and you haven't even seen the titles or thumbnails for these videos. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is you can be the best graphic designer in the world or the best title writer in the world, but if you're creating a thumbnail and title for a boring video idea, there's not much you can do to get people to click because the idea itself just isn't going to excite or entice people. Now, now obviously not all videos are designed to entertain people. Some videos are designed to educate people, but regardless, the principle still stands and that is a good video idea is the foundation you need to create a great video title and thumbnail. And that's why the next set you should focus on is generating really good video ideas. Now there are a ton of ways to generate good video ideas, but one way is by looking for trends and gaps in the market. Now, because of the promotion you're gonna be doing, which we talked about in the previous step, at this point in your channel's journey, you should have a pretty decent finger on the pulse of your niche. In other words, you have a broad understanding of the general sentiment. And so when something sticks out from the general sentiment, you'll be able to recognize it as a gap in the market or potentially a new trend. For example, let's say you notice a trend where a lot of people People start complaining about a particular weapon in Call of Duty because it's incredibly underpowered. Now, this tiny piece of information might not sound like much, it's actually a gold mine for video ideas. If you're a how-to channel, maybe you can create a tutorial about how this weapon is actually really good if you learn how to use it properly, and you're gonna show people how to use it properly. Or if you're an Epic Moments channel or pro gameplay channel, maybe you could create a video where you break some sort of kill world record using that particular weapon. Or if you're a commentary or let's play style channel, maybe you could create a challenge video where you force yourself to play online multiplayer matches using that horrendous weapon until you finish top of the leaderboard. Or if you're a comedy channel, maybe you create a sarcastic skit about how that weapon is actually the best weapon in the game. You get the idea, no pun intended. Because just because you have a good video idea doesn't mean it's going to instantly take off and get a lot of views. It is a foundation, but there are a few things you need to build upon if you want it to actually take off. In fact, it usually won't go anywhere if you don't nail the upcoming steps as well. Because as we've talked about, remember Dave and the Dave lookalikes, the algorithm looks at viewers of your videos to decide who else to promote your videos to. But something that kind of flew under the radar with that previous example is how did the OG first viewer Dave find that video in the first place? In other words, how does YouTube get an idea of who would be interested in your video if it has zero views? Well, the algorithm does have very good AI. It can actually, on its own, analyze pretty much every aspect of your video, including seeing what's actually in your thumbnail, transcribing and picking out keywords and phrases from within your video, analyzing each individual frame from within your video, and a whole lot more. And this gives it a decent idea of what your video is about. But an additional way that we can give the algorithm a helping hand is through your video's settings and metadata and the keywords you attach to your videos. Now, I used to think that there was some sort of secret setting or special setting combination that would make or break a video because clearly some people were blowing up and my videos weren't. I wanna tell you right now that there's not. Most settings actually don't matter that much. But it is still worth putting a bit of extra time into your settings, especially in the beginning, just to get the right first few views. And then from there, YouTube will use all the data to then extrapolate and find lookalikes, et cetera, et cetera. And in terms of exactly how to add settings, I do have another tutorial which you can watch after this one that goes pretty in depth on that. However, even though I recommend you put some time into it, we know settings aren't that important, but there are three ridiculously important things that if you mess them up, they could have a substantial impact on the performance of your video. First one of these is your description 
description. Interestingly, YouTube will actually give the keywords in your description more weight than it will give the tags you add to your video. So what you wanna do as a small channel is at the top of your description, write a few sentences basically just describing your video. Now you wanna write them in a way that real viewers will actually read it and interpret it as natural language. But you can also be sneaky and try to include some keywords in those sentences that will tell the algorithm what your video is about. Now you're not allowed to stuff keywords in your description, it's against YouTube terms and service, but you can still keep it pretty natural and include keywords as well. After that, we still have the two other most important aspects of preparing a video. And these steps are actually so important that I gave them their own step in this entire process. And here's how they work. So YouTube's goal at a high level is to keep as many viewers on the platform for as long as possible, because when it does that, it makes more money money because viewers are more likely to encounter more ads. Raid Shadow Legends. So the algorithm rewards creators who make videos that do just that key people on the platform. Now this makes sense to most people, but a lot of us miss a critical insight here, which is yes, obviously the videos themselves are important, but if people actually don't click on the videos in the first place, they won't even have an opportunity to watch the video. Now this can be called your click through rate. The percentage of people who actually click on your video after they see it listed on YouTube and making your click through rate as high as possible is essential. Now, I know you guys don't know what this is and I understand that. And that's why it's the next step. And to do that, all you have to do is create great titles and thumbnails. Simple, right? What? There are a ton of videos on YouTube about how to make your click-through rate better. So I don't wanna bore you too much with that because you might've already heard a bunch of things on it, but I will give you a quick tip that can have a massive impact on your click-through rate that I don't hear a lot of people talking about. And that is make sure your title and thumbnail complement one another. If your thumbnail conveys the exact same message as your title, usually that's a wasted opportunity. You want your title and thumbnail to work together as a team to get the viewer to click. A great example of this is Mr. Beast's Whatever You Build, I'll Pay For video. Based on the title alone in this video, you don't 100% get the picture of how the video is going to work. Also, based on the thumbnail alone, you still need some more context as to what's actually going on. But when the two come together, they work together as a team to communicate, oh, this is a Minecraft build battle where the winner of which will have the thing they built bought for them. But even if you do this and still have the most clickable video in the world, you're not going to get results if you don't nail our next step. Because as we talked about, YouTube wants to keep people on the platform. And so getting them to click is essential. But obviously, if they don't stick around after the click, you're in big trouble. So you just want to maximize the amount of people who actually watch your videos all the way to the end after they click on them. Again, there are a lot of videos on YouTube that talk about little tips and tricks and all that kind of thing on how to do it. Heck, I've even got a bunch of those videos. But one thing I do want to really highlight here is your hook or the beginning of your video. Now, I would define hook as say the first 30 seconds roughly. I think it's how YouTube defines it as well because it also has a lot of stats in your analytics. But within that, even just the first three to seven seconds of your video are absolutely essential. If you can't keep people watching for that period, they will leave. And so whatever your video is about, you really wanna communicate that to the viewers to reassure them that yes, the expectations that were set by your title and thumbnail will be met in this video. And you can do that creatively through creative scripts and images and video and all that kind of thing. But sometimes it can literally be just as simple as repeating the title of your video right at the beginning in your hook. So there's no cause for confusion and people know, yes, they actually did click on the right video and you're not going to be clickbaiting. Anything you fit in this triangle, I'll pay for. Bet, let's go. And that's the process. But right now you're probably feeling a little bit like this. And we all know that knowledge without execution doesn't lead to results. So how can you actually start implementing this process at a practical level? Well, from here, there are two paths you can take. The first one is you can do this all yourself. And if that's the path you take, what I'd recommend is that you actually stop and rewatch this video a few times because we covered a hell of a lot. And I think most people, myself included, definitely would probably need to rewatch a video like this a few times to really internalize everything that you actually learned. And then once you've done that, start at the beginning of this process and start working your way through it, optimizing and learning what you actually need until you get to the final step. And if you do everything correctly, 
by the time you get to the final step, I'd be willing to bet your results will start blowing you away. And that isn't just an opinion, that's an observation based on the ridiculous amount of channels I've seen this deployed across. But there is a second option and it's called the four digit 90 challenge. It's basically a course I created that will help you put this process into practice in detail and it'll walk you step by step to the point where you're able to reach your first 1000 subscribers. And it does all of this in 90 days or you get your money back. Now, I know every man and his dog has a program nowadays, but I like to think that the four digit challenge, unlike most of them out there, actually works because it's helped my students get results like this. And to me, what makes these results even cooler is that most of these guys were complete beginners. Most of them had limited time because they were working full-time jobs and yet they were still able to go on and get results like this. In fact, some of my students were able to quit their jobs and go full-time on YouTube, all thanks to these steps and the four digit 90 challenge. So you might be wondering, how does this magical challenge actually work? Well, basically it's built around the exact same process you just learned in this video, but it gives you the opportunity just to go way more in depth. Throughout the 90 days, you'll get almost daily video lessons and each one will teach you a specific strategy or tactic for that day. And once you've watched your lesson for the day, you'll be given a take action checklist, as well as sometimes templates and examples that will make it as easy as possible for you to actually implement what you just learned. And to make sure you never get stuck or lose motivation, you get live calls with me every two weeks and you get access to an extremely active private Discord server where you can meet like-minded people, ask questions and get feedback on your videos and tiles and thumbnails from people who actually know what they're talking about. And I think it's this trifecta that, based on all of my research, makes the 4Digit Challenge the fastest way to grow a loyal community of subscribers that will let you positively impact and connect with thousands of people all over the world and in the process, even and develop an online income stream where you can actually get paid for doing something you love. And also right now, if you sign up for my four digit 90 challenge, I'm gonna throw in a couple of bonuses completely for free. Firstly, you'll get the Grow Your Gaming Channel course, which is a beginner course that will help you master all of the technical skills like recording your footage, editing great videos, creating eye-catching thumbnails, basically all the things you need to master in step one of this process. And then you will also get the full-time creator blueprint masterclass, which is an in-depth video lecture where I'll lay out a rough roadmap for how to go beyond a thousand subscribers and turn your channel into a full-time stream of income when you get to the end of this process. So when you join the 4 digit challenge, not only will you be getting access to all the video lessons, the take action checklists, the live calls, private discord community, but you'll also be getting access to the Grow Your Gaming Channel course and the full-time blueprint masterclass completely for free. So if this sounds like something you would be interested in, you can click the link down below this video to join the four digit challenge. Now, if you join, follow and actually implement this process, but for some reason you don't have at least a thousand subscribers within 90 days of participating, I'll refund your entire investment every single cent. So if that sounds fair, click the link down below this video to join the four digit challenge. I really hope to see you there. Link is down below.